lie that made her the girl she is today And all the dope and the guys that helped her achieve that fame It's too late to be lonely now Even a bad actress gets to buy She always cries just a little every time she says She says, put up, please don't drown me today God let me sleep for change You can paint it gold, but it's still plastic Every little thing she does is to ride With a chemical smile, she started her night earlier today And if the truth isn't dead, it surely just wandered away But it's too late to be lonely now Even a bad actress gets to buy you she always cries just a little every time she says She says, put up, please don't drown me today And God let me sleep for a change You can paint it gold, but it's still plastic Every little thing she does is to ride you Oh! She says, she says, put up, please don't drown me today. And God let me see for change. She says, put up, please don't drown me today. And God give me strength to smile through the pain. Still plastic. She got a knack for turning rope into elastic. And it's been so long since she believed in magic. Every little thing she does is tragic. My name's Todd Cooper. Been in bands in town for a long time, most notably. Started a band called Full Power with my friend Billy Blizzard in uh, 1989, and uh, we did that for the next 20 years. At the end of that, I decided that uh, I needed to definitely keep playing, so uh, Billy and I, along with Chris Clark, uh, started a band called Blue Oyster Culture Club to have some fun with. In the meantime, when Blue Oyster Culture Club isn't keeping me busy enough, I also play in a band called It, and I play in a band called Third Wounded Man, just to uh, make sure I never have a single moment of downtime. Music grabbed me way early. Uh, my parents are both big music fans. My dad was uh, well into like the 60s and 70s country music. That's what I always heard when I was riding with him. When I was riding with mom, it was, uh, it was rock and roll, classic rock and roll, Elvis, Chuck Berry, the Beach Boys, that kind of thing. She was the kind of person, she followed Elvis all over the Midwest, going to show after show. So when it came time for me to develop, a, I don't know, whatever I was gonna get into in music, she was right there uh, right there supporting the whole thing. I took piano lessons when I was little. Then something came along called KISS, and it changed everything. In 1982, I discovered KISS at the age of 10. Two months later, every square inch of my wall was covered with pictures of KISS. That was just everything. She took me to see KISS uh, March 1st, 1983, and that thing, that really changed everything. I remember standing up, dancing, shaking everything that a 10 year old could possibly do at about a height of three feet. Nothing was ever the same after that KISS show. I wanted to play the drums. I wanted to learn to play the drums. I wanted to be in a band. I wanted to be on that stage. I wanted to be on the road with KISS tomorrow. 
it's just kind of been a never look back thing. I did learn how to play drums. We had this big console TV in my mom's bedroom. And for some reason, you were able to fine tune the channels. And she somehow made channel eight MTV. We didn't have the cable box or anything, but she made that TV pull in MTV for me somehow. And I sat there transfixed. And I learned how to play the drums from watching all the drummers on MTV, just what they would do. I learned how to keep time that way. Uh, got a pair of sticks and on this little uh, like ottoman that was by the bed, uh, I kept time along with MTV and that's how I learned. Fast forward just a little bit later to uh, freshman year, be 1987. My friend since grade school, Bill Blizzard and I, we decided, well, we should have a band. We might as well do this. We had been doing, we had been doing lip sync shows to uh, horrified family and friends for a couple years where we would just play the stereo reel out and act like we were playing stuff, but high school came and we decided that we should really learn how to play. Billy was going to learn how to play guitar. I was going to play the drums and Bill didn't take to it right away. He didn't, he didn't make friends with the guitar quite so quick. And it was never a situation of, well, we should just get someone new. It was Billy and I are going to be in a band together. So the only logical explanation was for me to learn how to play guitar. So I learned not thinking about every spare minute in my head is singing along to some song in there. There's always a beat or I'm always tapping my hands or there's never a time that I'm not thinking about some song, even if I'm helping a customer at my shop or, I mean, you could be doing business with me and I might be singing Cannibal Corpse. You just never know. It's always there. It's what I think about. It's what keeps me going. I know that's hokey to say. I'm a sucker for a good hook. I like music that, that most people would make fun of and I do get made fun of a lot but I don't believe there's such a thing as a guilty pleasure if I like it I like it I can't I can't tell you why why do you like green beans I like this song that's just the way it is so I I have everything that my moods might dictate me needing whether it's Elvis or Jerry Lee Lewis all the way to Cannibal Corpse or anything in between there's always something there and I, I've always always gotten something out of almost everything gangster rap you name it I like it all pretty much everything except techno. When, when we first started, um, Billy and I played as full power with one other guy. We were a trio, and they used to do these things called Teen Talent Week in the mid to late 80s. And in 1989, in August, we did uh, a Metallica song, For Whom the Bell Tolls, at Teen Talent Week at Krug Park. And that was the first time that we ever played in front of anybody. There were quite a few people there too, and yes, I was nervous. and. We got through it and it was just enough to know that we just had to keep going. So after that, we got Dave Matt, we got Full Power, we got Ryan Arn, we got that going. We were way too young to get into bars. I mean, we were 16, 15. There was this place at 11th and Hickory called the Hickory Auction Building. And my dad knew the guy that owned it and it was built in an old theater. And uh, he said, I have auctions on Saturdays. So if you wanna do a show on Friday, you can, but you just gotta move all my stuff out and move all my stuff back. That's what we would do. The first year or so, we would have shows down there. We played cover songs. We started writing a few originals later, but uh, we would have to move table after table, box after box of this auction stuff away, put on the show, which we had lights and everything that we built. And then at midnight when we stopped, we would spend the next two or three hours putting all the auction stuff back. And that's just how it started. We started renting letter carriers hall. We couldn't play in bars. We wanted it to be all ages. We wanted the kids to be up front. We wanted everybody to slam dance and do all that stuff because that's the only way we're going to get out of here. We had so much fun doing that. We took lights with us. We took all of the equipment that we could with us. And we kind of, I want to say we created a scene because there are musicians that have been around well before we were. We tried our best to make it a, a community. We tried our best to make it something worth seeing something that people would respond to and not just be background music for a bunch of people getting drunk in a bar. We, try, we wanted to write our own songs and, and I don't know, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm into hokey territory here, but we wanted to like, I don't know, make a difference. We wanted to write songs that people could remember and 
course that time it's all about metal which pretty much still is we wanted it to be memorable and we wanted it to be different and i we might not have been great but i think we accomplished different i think we accomplished memorable i still many years later i still get so many nice compliments about what we did in full power and people talk about how we inspired them or whatever and that that means more than than anyone could ever know there's so much to do in St. Joe. And now, you know, now that we're old enough to play bars and stuff like that, we just try to avoid being the background music for people getting drunk. We still, <laughs> we still try to do, no matter what band I'm playing in or who I'm with, we still try to play in a way that it's, it's something that people will take notice to. We just kind of refuse to be background or whatever. Never been the greatest musician. I've definitely never been the greatest vocalist, but I've always thought that if the heart was in it and if you meant what you said, people would connect to it people would understand it and they could enjoy it that's pretty much what i've been working with for a long time and it seems to have gotten us through because people say nice things and people show up it's just a great overwhelming sense of gratitude that i have for all of that as far as saint joe other than us there's so much to do there's more here than people give it credit for saint joe gets knocked on a lot like you go to san francisco or you go to houston or wherever and people are yeah it's my city people are proud to be from there and 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 you know, they'll fly the flag, but you kind of don't see that around St. Joe. You don't get anyone putting their fists in the air and screaming STJ, but you know what? It's, it's a pretty cool place. There's a lot, a lot of talent here. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of people here who are willing to give that talent a place. Any given night, you can go see someone playing original music. Jimmy Green in The Rendezvous for decades now. It's amazing what he's done. Uh, I've said it before, but... Anybody in this town who's played music for 10 minutes owes Jimmy Green something. Whether you know it or not, you owe Jimmy Green. And not just Jimmy, I mean the Cafe Acoustic, um, Magoons, there's just the guys at Hammerjacks bringing all the rock stuff. There's so much to do here. And you gotta kinda get over that stigma of, well, this is St. Joe, there must not be, must not be anything worthwhile because it's St. Joe, we'll have to drive somewhere. If you just open the paper, um, you, there's something for you to do every night. If you like music, you can go watch somebody playing it. It's there for you. I don't mean to be preachy because I don't always get up and go support everybody like I should, but it's there and I try to whenever I can. That's the biggest thing is that stigma that it's just St. Joe so it can't be good. That's, that's crap. There's, there's great stuff here. Definitely not me. Definitely not the guys I'm involved with. Everybody else is better. Go watch them. <laughs> there's no day in my life. There's no hour in my life that, that music doesn't have a part of, whether it's trying to write a song or or listening to a song, but there's always something going. I can trace so many things in my life and in my friends' lives that go back to the minute that Billy and I said, we have to have a band together. I can tell you about marriages. I can tell you about a dozen marriages that occurred because of full power, including the four guys in the band, five guys, if you count both bass players people who actually have proposed marriage at our shows because they met at our shows. I can tell you about children that exist because Billy and I decided to make music together. It goes beyond just a bunch of dumbass high school kids saying, man, let's be famous. I mean, it, it became so much more. And it, I, I know my wife, I'm with my wife because I chose to make music with Bill Blizzard and a guy who liked that music introduce me to her that's that's a big deal i mean a lot of people write it off like for some reason it's okay for a bunch of guys thousands of guys to sit outside of a football stadium with painted faces eating hot dogs and that's pretty acceptable but if i talk about the fact that i can tell you all of the kiss records in chronological order then that makes me a fool that's not true it's it's uh it's just as just as worthwhile as anything it is everything that i love dearly. I can trace it back to music in some way or another. Memories of my mother, uh, memories of my dad. Um, the, reason that, the reason that a certain Merle Haggard song will make me cry every time. That's power. That's, that's what it's about to me. That's, that's what it can all be traced back to. I just don't think there's any other way I could get along. I don't think there's any other, I don't think there's any other reason for as many things in my life as music. Maybe food to a lesser degree, but music for sure that's that's what it's all about to me this is one-on-one -on -one with todd cooper you're watching tuning fork tv